technology is inevitable geographies will shrink in boundaries will vanish right so the silos which were which was always there which people are still fighting around while while they while they are trying to be productive are going to be shattered by technology welcome to another episode of the people hum interview series i'm your host sneha murthy and let's begin with a quick introduction of people hum people hum is an end to end one view integrated human capital management automation platform the winner of the 2019 global kodi award for hcm that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work we run the people hum blog and video channel which receives upwards of 200000 visitors a year and publishes around two interviews with well known names globally every month and now for our guest navomita muzamdar is amongst the top 100 influencers for startups is a president's awardee one top 100 women achievers award by ministry of women and child development india ranks second in top 20 hr influencer in social media by hrm india 2015 Top 25 influential women on Twitter, top 100 technology influencer in India, top 100 HR influencer by my refers is the founder of Navomita.com and has also been quoted in Forbes US for Future of Work. These are just few of her achievements. It's our honor to have someone of her stature with us on our show today. Welcome, Navomita. We are thrilled to have you. What an honor being invited and part of such a glorious. platform which people are people have have created so meaningfully to share the knowledge which matters to the decision makers and the organization builders so thank you so much i am looking i'm excited i'm honored i'm grateful and i'm i can't just wait to look because, because i'm i'm looking forward to what what's in store <laughs> really excited please take me through thank you so much navomita it's absolutely a pleasure So the first question I had for you was you've had quite an exciting journey so far. Can you tell us your story about how you came to start with navomita.com? Okay. So um navomita.com was is a part has been a part of the journey which started long time back. Let me begin begin the fact they begin a point wherein uh, this is the last term of my uh, MBA course at Excelra right? and we were shown hr communities uh, in 2006 so whatever i saw it right at that point of time i wasn't too happy about it and since i um, i mean i did not i did not exactly know what it should be but i somehow felt it it has to be uh, something far more visionary far more revolutionary far more game changing those were the things that i mean somewhere it, it did strike me so uh, interestingly after that session i met uh, dr madhuka shukla and uh, once i met him i said that sir i did not like what i i mean what i had just heard he said you are an mba student you are never supposed to like anything you are supposed to just like everything and then create it on your own so um, he gave me an idea that nhr community should be open uh, anonymous uh, free to use worldwide a uh, high on intellectual discussion people should be able to just go there and find every solution to every problem that they are building i love that idea the power of the idea was so strong that i kept looking for it i'm i'm not an engineer i'm an mba so i kept looking for it on website uh, on internet and uh, just as you must have logged in on facebook as a member on day 1 i did the same thing with this website and um at that point of time it was it was it was marginally small and uh, the moment i saw it i saw the potential to that product i knew what it could be built i had visions about it so i started working towards it just as a member and then we created the i created the first offline chapter for that community in pune and then it uh, went across the entire nation and then it it was uh, it was there in many countries as well out, uh, in abroad So that point of time, I came came in touch with the person who was building the website, and we decided that uh, well, it's 2006. Uh, nobody um, at at that point of time, if you remember, there was no India startup story. HR community as a product had not been really thought of. Uh, media tech word had not been invented, and there was no Sequoia Capital or Matrix partners who would be funding a product like that. 
and we did not even know if, if there would be a revenue generation or a market for it. Given that, we were still geared, we were still uh, inspired, right? We had that fire uh, because we knew that this, the strength of the, we, we love this product, we knew the strength of the product. And it's not just the promise of a great future, but actually a promise to build something really meaningful that got us, both of us excited. And we decided that uh, at any point of time where we have uh, that that amount of leverage, uh, leverage, bandwidth, wherein we can give up our jobs at that point of time, definitely we'll be, we had jobs, full-time jobs. We can give up our jobs and we can take this as a full-time, we'll do that. So 2006, um, definitely back, back then I was working in different companies. Uh, but then that's exactly where I, I gained a lot of professional knowledge, which added on to my, uh, my, my domain later on. And essentially, I met leaders who inspired me to be like them. And uh, obviously, that kind of maturity, business maturity, process maturity, helped me create companies and products later on. Uh, straight to 2010, when uh, the product was earning enough, we, I decided to join it full time. Throughout this, I was just moonlighting. I used to come back from work, sit in the afternoon, work in the evening, uh, build the product the way I know it, it has a future, a better. Uh, a better promise. 2010, I joined it full time. I was a partner to that community, and uh, we, it, it it was pretty promising, right? We served uh, three more than three million worldwide in terms of HR Alexa, Alexa ranking. We were first in terms of uh, HR communities. We were at, uh, in 2006. We were ahead of PayScale and even US government website. So that point of time, um, I I have I, I'm I'm great that I was chosen to be a top 100 woman of India by the Ministry of Women and Child Development and I received this award. Uh, that point of time, there, there, there were different avenues that were opening up to me. It's the right point of time for me to even, um, even look ahead in terms of creating the next lead, the next league of what I had already been doing from 2006 to 16. So that's, that's where Naomita.com was born. It's an, it's an evangelist platform, right? If you have a product, you have a brand, if you have a cause, uh, whether it's an AI, a machine learning, or even an NGO, or maybe a government initiative, we amplify it, we evangelize it. We make sure that your target audience tells you why your product is so important in the market and why should people buy it. So it's, uh, it's evangelism is, as you know, is something which, uh, which is exactly where uh, I mean, which is which is the next level to marketing? It starts where marketing stops. Marketing is all about telling people what your product is, and in evangelism, people tells you what your product is, and they tells you why should they buy it. So uh, it's been a great journey it's, uh, since 2016 to uh, 2020. We have worked in different segments: finance, banking, retail, um, technology, investment. We have worked with uh, clients of different segments from one community to other, I mean, footprints of 22 million, 10 million, 6 million. I mean, footprints of, of these communities keep, keep increasing, and that's always an honor. Having said that, uh, we are also grateful to be a part of a lot of government government initiative, which, which is where the entire nation building and industry building uh, efforts, right, that we put in. Can becomes turns meaningful. I'm grateful to be a uh, to, to be the national chair chairperson to uh, Confederation of uh, CIM SME. Uh, now this is exactly a confederation which which is addressing the the need for the scaling up of businesses. And um, to tell you a little, in uh, last six months during the COVID times, we have been growing at a probably um, at a rate that we did not even imagine. And we have signed six agreements with government who are pushing through to ensure the industry bounces back. So uh, that allows at least me as a human being to do uh, everything that I want for the, for the economy, for the industry. I'm grateful to have been inducted as a council advisor to um, All India Railway Committee. It, 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 it offers me a huge amount of a potential, a potential to deliver something that would 
create a change railway is just not an organization as you know it's the largest organization in the world one of the oldest and uh, it's 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 highly um, it's it's highly evolving so i guess i'm looking forward to all those areas and uh, that that's about my journey i'm i'm grateful i uh, for every opportunity to work to contribution that have that have reached me i'm grateful to have received all of it because that's exactly how i grew that's exactly what made me who i am today so thank you wow that is such an interesting journey and we can absolutely see the passion while you're explaining it through us thank you so much thank you so much so the second question i had for you is what is the important of feedback and analytics tool in hr hr okay human beings how do you how do you communicate especially in this era right uh, i i would want to take a step back and talk about 10 years back right when i um, when i started i mean interestingly when i started full time working for my first product first startup i i was telecommuting right so that was point of time there was a new concept being talked about as future of work the moment it came along i uh, top technology firms were releasing papers they were the ones who were evangelizing it and uh, it seemed like a agenda by which they are trying to push to to ensure technology sells but few of us saw much far beyond it we realized that this is the future this is literally the future if we do not get the industry up and running on this some day some day we would be pushed into that direction and got for it if we are not prepared we are going to fail and pandemic has actually taught us that companies who were um, who were already in a hybrid working model have actually excelled right in terms of uh, business revenue in terms of growth and companies who who did not i mean who did not create that kind of a future of work design had not really been able to scale up that big right so um going by that formula if you look at the working culture now how do you let anybody understand that they are doing working right right um do you micromanage is micromanaging the tool to ensure perf- the performance is right is feed forward the right tool to ensure somebody goes exactly right right so uh, we don't really know um, i mean in my my language of leadership micromanaging uh, absolutely have have no value i find it extremely underproductive uh, feed forward is a great process but then just as plans always do not work you do not really know whatever feedback that you're giving at the right at the beginning might be might actually be helpful yes certain kind of a guideline of what the person is going to be measured throughout the process is good so that the per- person is acting upon them and ensuring they meet those standards but a complete feed forward right in the beginning of the process re- will require certain amount of feedback to ensure the the gaps that had happened in the in the process analytics is a huge um analytics is is this it it has to be the backbone and not exactly a crutch right uh, you cannot use it to support your point of view right just as they say that uh, data torture to submission that should that's not how an analytics should be but then it's the analytics that ensures that the human uh, the human uh, op- option right for error is completely eradicated you cannot i mean uh, yes bots are designed by ai ai is designed by a human so at the end of the day bots would still behave on the biases the human being who had designed it right so by with all due regards you will need a mach- a machine based data to actually guide you to ensure that there are no biases and uh, in 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 an organization you just can't help right you do not know who is who is uh, on what point of time at what tangent right it is not possible to understand you cannot have a crystal ball or a mind mapping tool all the time placed on every human being to understand who's going through what 
so that way i believe it's the analytic which should give you give everyone a better idea a stronger idea that businesses can can trust right and uh, businesses can value and take decisions which actually matter this is all about revenue so until and unless you have something which is extremely stable and stood the time in the test of time i think you you are you are betting on money that you do not own and that's something nobody should do so that's my view point on it absolutely we need something to look up to right like in analytics we get a view of how the process is taking place and what is it going through and that gives a sense of trust within itself right thank you right. thank you so much for that and how can hr institutionalize the right technologies and why is it important to build tech expertise if you see right the entire ev uh, evolution of hr right from personal management to hr uh, to the entire uh, will bot take us to take away our jobs scenario what is happening what is one thing that is common tech third technological upgrade one thing is one thing for sure which which we realized back in 2010 when future of work was first being discovered was technology is inevitable geographies will shrink in boundaries will vanish right so the silos which were which was always there which people are still fighting around while while they while they are trying to be productive are going to be shattered by technology you cannot train everybody at a at a eq level which is i mean which is good for any ceo you cannot you have to depend on technology to bring everyone up to the speed to ensure the same amount of performance by your entire team so for hr uh, it's great to have all those training programs yes you need yes human interaction yes human uh, i have learned a lot from my leaders i have learned a lot from people who have mentored and groomed me and prepared me as a leader however i have equally i have equally i could equally scale up because of the technology that i could learn right and uh, patch in with a workforce which was zillion miles ahead of me of not away but ahead of me right in terms of their uh, technical skills in terms of their capabilities so i think it's the technology which allows the level playing field so hr do not really have much of a choice but but to shake their hands with technology absolutely i completely agree to the point that technology is inevitable it is not going to take away the jobs but instead it is just going to ease up the work and get you in touch with where you cannot reach exactly absolutely absolutely thank you so much for that navamita and as we see there are a lot of young people the millennials and all out coming now right so what advice do you have for the young people starting out in the hr industry know that you are work, going to work with a workforce right who is going to be definitely smarter than you and uh, there would be people in your office whom who who are ahead of you in age group and you think they are not too good in technology but you are wrong right uh, because um, a lot of i mean a lot of baby boom boomers played angry birds more than young people uh, pokemon go was not just for kids it was for every age group so uh, if you are an hr and if you are starting your career right now your your entire talent a uh, base is extremely confusing you cannot really categorize that a young person is technologically uh, solid and a uh, elder or or a little older person might require guidance right so uh, for you it it is it is going to be entirely a different challenge a uh, reverse mentoring initially used to happen in terms of uh in terms of reporting structures but now reverse mentoring essentially happens in terms of skills and capabilities right somebody who has a greater skill in something gets mentored by somebody who has lesser skill in that because there are certain gaps in his 
his knowledge which he needs to work upon so uh, all these all these um, nuances right is something that is going to make your job very interesting very different at the same point of time i think you should you should also allow allow yourself to grow through all these things don't expect um, i mean if i were you i would have loved the hr job now because it's a lot more challenging right everybody every day would tell you that we no no longer need, need an hr team so fine you can just shop, shut the shop and go home but then at the end of the day they would still require that okay no it's okay um we still require an hr team okay let let her, let her, let, let her run the shop for at least one more year and then they realize uh um, okay she did so many things and she was actually a facilitator in all these areas so probably we should continue with her you will be the person who would be pouring such thoughts in them uh, for you it's not just the it's not just the performance management of the people that you need to run for you it's not just the payroll that you need to run attendance management you no longer need to run there are so many better machineries taking care of it you need to be more concerned about the ebitda of your firm the capex the growth index you need to be even more if you can if only you can sound than your cfo because if you have mastered the finance area of your company you nobody nobody can threaten your job as an hr take my words i say it with years of experience i i still have a lot of areas in hr which we work through and those are the areas which are always designed for future i i just love working in uh, in all in developing all those products and developing working with these companies so i say with experience if you you if you want to have your job as an hr be a little more smarter than you see you good luck wow that that's interesting the way you put it out it's go, it's it's like spreading out so much of energy it like right away is going to help people to take it up more now <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much for that and before wrapping up the interview i would love to ask uh, your sound bites for uh, to leave with our audience for mm okay let me tell you a story january this year companies were working as if they have hit the jackpot right so hiring was on the rise product building was on the rise people were planning their uh, buying of homes people were planning of growth which is exactly what they should be doing there's nothing wrong with it january 2020 in less than 90 days the world changes suddenly we have a world wherein i my experience a client of mine who uh, builds a technology product but who builds technology products for, the, for for many companies where suddenly at the announce i mean the moment the, the announcement of this entire global shutdown started the client the client just abruptly called off a product shipping at the very last moment the team had worked day and now day in and day out they have they have invested so much money into it pumped in so much money into it spent so much on technology just to build that product and at the last minute right before the shipment the client calls it off and the company is running into losses it's cash trip because the the entire expenses had happened on the basis of the payment that would come on the shipment of the product and now the cash is gone the market is gone it's a global shutdown employees are demotivated there's a product ready for the market no where to go what do you do uh, we took a call with our um, with our ceo but differently this time we included the employees as well we took everyone online on board he said you have to hear what we discussed and then we we if we find a solution today good or else we will have this call again so the first thing what we did was we shared the exact situation which we right in the beginning told everyone that you already this is a story that you already know 
now the story changes you have to go ahead and tell us how can we change this company for better how can we ensure we don't fire any one of you how can we ensure that given that this is the amount of money that is left in the in the company how long can we sustain on this what best can be done so that even if we are not being able to sustain we still don't need to close our shop what can you think of in a situation wherein all of us are all of us are about to lose our pool all of us are about to uh, on the verge of a of a psychological break, breakdown what can you guys do for us do about it now the employees the product team first and foremost so started suggesting certain changes in the product which would make the product a little more market suitable to take it to a greater number of clients right uh, customize it for a far greater number of clients and do a pilot for free because in a shutdown situation anybody would want to try a product right so the pro this was the product team's idea the operation team came up sharing what best can be done in uh, in terms of staggered workforce in terms of delivery so that the cost can be managed right uh, the entire expenses can be managed and how best still can be ensured that the operation goes on when we are not paying everyone we cannot have everybody working 24 by 7 so that's what the operation team started started sharing which we can't thank them enough for it marketing team poke holes in situations wherein in spite of the entire gloom and doom people are still looking forward to something because the market will open up and once the market will open up people would be aggressive so the marketing team started at least bouncing a few ideas if not a, a complete plan and then came the employees in next few weeks a product was rolled out which was uh, which which could which they could pilot it with many more clients and then their those clients became their ready customers in future so even when they were uh, working with such limited cash they could ensure that before they run out of that cash they have some more coming into it they have a business pipeline in spite of the close down employees were extremely the ownership of the employees sky rocketing everybody was working irrespective of any performance management uh, report assign, assigned to them they did not they literally not cared for the scorecard anymore they were just working because they they, they had to do it i mean it it was it was like a it was like a driving force for them the co company sailed through and just as you know june onwards the businesses have been rolling in, in a, a lot more aggressively right now the business are extremely aggressive the government is government are aggressive in terms of getting the market back on track so right now they are in a situation wherein no they did not have to fire anybody they could manage the payment in terms of rotating the cost and whatever uh, i mean whatever payment had to be made at whatever point of time all the employees are lot more skilled because everybody was heavily into training when they were not into operation so that they are prepared for the next uh, next delivery the product team has 100 more ideas on how best to create a product for the market test it out and then so sell it to many rather than uh, rather than just working for one client and the finance team looks happy if you were the hr of this com com company i'm sure you would have a better story than this i i am going to wait to hear your story because i know you have created a better history please do share it with us wish you all the best thank you thank you so much it it, it brings in so much of positivity in the in the end and that's really amazing thank you i had a great time i really had a great time she talking to you I had a great time as well. It was an enriching experience for me, and I'm sure it's going to be the same for our audience as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Navamita. Go ahead. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for taking this call so late in in a Saturday evening. God bless people, Hamtin, and everybody who's watching this. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.